Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.2.1 has been out for a few weeks and iOS 17.3 beta 3 has been out for a few days. There's features and updates to talk about since the iOS 17.3 beta 3 is out what's new video. We'll also talk about the overall experience as I've been using them full time on my 15 pro max along with my iPad pro. We'll also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 16,000 votes and 163 comments. I've gone through all of the comments to determine what the experience is like, and we'll take a look at some of those comments a little bit later in the video. Now, the first thing is Apple Vision Pro. I wanted to mention a couple things with that as Apple is sending out a new email stating when the pre-orders go live, when it's available, and you can see its pre-order is available on January 19th at 5 a.m. Pacific, which is 8 a.m. Eastern time. Then it's available on February 2nd. The odd thing about this email though, is if you scroll down, it says you need to have an iPhone or iPad with face ID nearby. It says when you order Apple vision pro, you'll need to scan your face with an iPhone or iPad with face ID. This helps us determine the right size light seal and headbands, which work together to give you a precise fit. This is probably going to be a bit of an issue if a ton of people are pre-ordering this. And also if you wear glasses, you can order custom lenses to go along with this as it's designed to be worn without lenses. So a little different than what we've seen before. Now, according to recent leaks and rumors, there may be only about 80,000 units available for pre-order. However, it is only available in the United States, but I expect it's still going to sell out pretty quickly. Additionally, it looks like it may only start with 16 gigs of Ram and 256 gigabytes of storage for that $3,500. Hopefully it's a little bit more storage than that, but we'll have to wait and see as Apple doesn't show any of that information yet on the, on the website or anywhere else. So if you're interested in pre-ordering it, that's when you actually have to do that. I ran a poll on X or Twitter where it said, will you be buying an Apple vision pro 19% said yes. 81% said no. And that was out of 9,258 votes. Now, many people that follow me are into tech and more. So it makes sense that maybe more than normal would actually order it, but either way, I still expect them to sell these out pretty quickly. So other than that, Apple is actually opening a new store in South Korea on January 20th. You can actually get some new wallpaper for it here. I'll link it in the description and you can see the website here with the wallpaper linked. So if we take a look at it, it takes a moment to load and there's some new wallpaper to actually celebrate the opening of the store. Also, HomePod Mini is apparently coming to Malaysia soon. In the coming months, based off a new regulatory finding in a local database, this is according to Xavier Noxa on X or Twitter, it looks like the HomePod Mini will be available in Malaysia. So if you've been wanting one and you live in that area, hopefully you'll see this very, very soon. Now the Apple Watch ban may return as the ITC opposed Apple's motion, or the International Trade Commission opposed Apple's motion, for the ban to stay paused during the process of appeal of the ruling of the technology used for the O2 sensor sensor in the series nine and Apple watch ultra two. It also goes back to older Apple watches, but they may have to remove them from the store again within a week or so. Hopefully Apple can figure this out before that happens again, but either way they may be off the store shelves in the U S very, very soon. Now YouTube actually discontinued an app that was within iMessage. So if you use iMessage and you were using apps within that, if you had an app for YouTube, they've now discontinued it in the messaging app. So that's something they'll no longer be supporting. I honestly have never used it. I'm curious if you've used it before. Now, as far as new features, I have iOS 17.3 beta three on my blue iPhone 15 pro max, and I have 17.2.1 on the titanium or natural titanium color. I was using this during CES and now I need to switch back to the beta. I needed something that was reliable for travel. So let me go ahead and quickly switch over my SIM card. I'll do that and then we'll get back to the new features. I've confirmed it on my natural titanium phone and it's transferred to my other phone now. Now it's activated on the blue titanium phone and we're back on the beta. So I have T-Mobile, just one bar right now and the weather's pretty poor. And when that happens, I usually only have one bar or so where I live. But as far as new releases or new features, if we go under Apple care and warranty under our settings, under general Apple care and warranty, give it a second to load here. You'll see with iOS 17.2.1, it shows paired devices on iOS 17.3 beta three. It actually says more devices. So it's showing all of my devices connected instead of just the paired ones. So that's a little bit different between both updates. Now also per the code, it seems Apple is working to restore the TV shows and movie access according to Aaron P 613 on X. So those of you that were wanting the TV app 
and maybe the movie app where they took that away on Apple TV. Hopefully they bring that back. That's a bit of a pain and very confusing for those of you using TV where you have to go into the store, purchase things here, and they've just sort of brought it all into one app, but it doesn't work that great. So hopefully they update that very, very soon. Also in this update, it's fairly small at this point, but we have stolen device protection, which does seem to work pretty well now. So if we go under face ID and passcode, if we scroll down here, you'll see stolen device protection is on on this version. And if we go to turn it off, it verifies face ID and then says security delay, and then we can start that. It all seems to be working properly. There are still some questions around it as if maybe if I move and it's not a trusted location, can I still turn it off? What if I've lost the face ID updates and more? So there's some little details that definitely need to be worked out. And if you're nervous about that, I wouldn't activate it just yet if you're on the beta. Of course, in this update, we have the collaborative playlists, which seem to be working pretty well. I do have one small complaint about it. So if we go into our playlist, test playlist, when you go to change the actual emoji for the first time, it takes a second to change. So you'll see here, there it just changed. The next time I do it, it will be nice and fast though. So there's a little bit of a lag or delay there. It is a new feature, but they still need to change it a little bit. As far as other things they've released this week, well, one thing's a little odd is if you have a magic keyboard, just like this one, it received an update this week. This update was to version 2.0.6 and they released it this past Thursday. Now there hasn't been a ton of those, but on Apple's security update website, you'll see here where they say magic keyboard firmware update and actually tell us what they fixed. It's actually a security update that says an attacker with physical access to the accessory may be able to extract its Bluetooth pairing key and monitor Bluetooth traffic traffic or basically what you're pressing on the keyboard to fix it. A session management issue was addressed with improved checks. So they've resolved this in that update. Unfortunately, it updates similar to what we have with maybe an air tag where it sort of updates on its own in the background. So that's something that we can't really control, but it updates on its own when it's paired. So if you have one, make sure it's turned on and paired, or maybe just plug it in with your lightning adapter and it should update on its own. Now, as far as other updates, we had a Safari technology preview and you can see Safari technology preview version 186 released on January 10th, 2024. And you can test things such as extensions or different things you're making on websites on Mac OS Ventura or Mac OS Sonoma. Now, the big thing I think we're waiting for is side loading. Side loading is about to happen in March in the European Union, unless something changes. Tim Cook is actually meeting with people from the European Union to discuss that, why he disagrees, but a recent ruling says they have to open it up and allow third party apps and third party app stores. If nothing changes between now and March, we'll probably see some sort of update, maybe with iOS 17.4 or one of those betas to enable it. But again, it's supposed to be region specific. Now, as far as iOS 17.3, we expect iOS 17.3 RC probably within a few days at this point. So around Tuesday or Wednesday, we could see the RC with a final release, maybe on the 22nd. Now it is possible we get iOS 17.3 beta four, but last year iOS 16.3 only had two versions and then a RC and then a final release. So I would expect it toward the end of January possibly early February, but I think probably the 22nd or maybe the 29th, but Apple's going to get ready for Apple vision pro with all of that as well. As far as iOS 17.2.2, well, it looks like so far there's no sign of that. We're not seeing it in website analytics or anything else. And the same is true with watchOS 10.2.1. It looks like Apple will not be able to resolve the issue with possibly having a ban again by software. So it seems to be more of a hardware related issues at this point. As far as iOS 17.3 beta three's experience and bugs, well, so far it seems it's fixed the boot loop issue for most, but a couple people did experience it. I found online only about two or so people said they had this issue that I could find where beta three would install and then go into a boot loop and they had to reinstall using either iTunes or finder to get back to beta one and then update or just go back to the public version of iOS 17.2.1. However, there's some other good news. It doesn't seem to be a problem for most people and the volume and slider stuttering doesn't seem to be an issue for most people as well. So if you went into music, go back, change something quick, it seems to respond as you would think the volume slider is not stuttering or just acting odd. It looks like they've fixed that. Also, someone else has said that Siri is now working correctly if you choose a different voice. So maybe you go into your settings, you go down to Siri and search and you want to change the Siri voice to maybe Australian or something else. <laughs> we'll give it a second here. And if you change it to something else, 
then it will sometimes revert back to the American voice. Now it stays to with whatever you selected. So that's been fixed. However, there are some bugs that still remain. It did seem to mess up some people's contact key verification if they had that enabled where they still have the verification in their contact, but it doesn't work properly. Also, it looks like music album art sometimes disappears on the lock screen. So if you're playing a song, so let's turn this down. If you're playing a song, you go home, lock your phone. Sometimes the album art just sort of disappears. I've seen this on iOS 17.2.1 as well. So I don't think it's iOS 17.3. I think it's more server side sometimes with it loading, but either way, I haven't seen it since, and it seems to work. Okay. As far as other bugs, well, the typical ones are still there where it's sort of, let's get rid of this here. If we go into our notifications and scroll up and down, they jump in. So again, you'll see them sometimes jump in. Sometimes they don't, there we go. And that seems to be an issue they haven't fixed. Also the wallpaper dimming bug is there, but it's not as severe. It is there, but it does dim or desaturate the photo just a little bit this time around. So it's getting better, but it's not a hundred percent fixed. Now, as far as iOS 17.2.1, I used it on my trip to CES in Las Vegas and used it the entire time on my main phone just to see how it would be. And more and more websites report issues with cellular. This typically seems to be outside the U S but I did have the issue with this phone where it would just jump off cellular, then sometimes jump back on. It was a little odd. So it was going back and forth for a little while. So far, it seems very steady on iOS 17.3 from what I've seen online so far. Most people do say that Wi-Fi is fixed though in 17.2.1, that battery's better unless they have some odd apps that are using them in the background, such as meta apps. The brightness bug is still there. The volume bug is still there, but fixed in beta three of iOS 17.3. And there's still a few other issues. The wallpaper bug, the notification bug, MagSafe battery packs sometimes take a couple tries to work or your phone doesn't charge properly. So you have to reboot it. And then there's dictation and autocorrect that have been a little bit odd or off lately. And sometimes keyboard lag. Quite a few people report keyboard lag on 17.2.1. Why it's there. I'm not sure, but for me, it seems to be gone on 17.3. I was using it full time on my iPad and had no issues with that. As far as any other improvements, well, camera improvements, I don't notice a ton here, but take a look at a couple of photos, see what you think compared to 17.2.1. I don't really think they're going to improve it at this point. We may get a little bit of a surprise once they release it to the public, but they did improve autofocus for the telephoto zoom on the pro phones with the last update. But in general, it seems to work as you would expect. And I've had no issues there. As far as the overall speed, well, it seems to be nice and fast with the betas so far. I really haven't seen any complaints and most people say performance is great. Whether it's on the iPhone 11 or 15 pro max, they're both nice and fast. Whether we go into different apps, you're loading Safari, go into the app store, give it a second to load. Of course, that's based off your Wi-Fi connection and more, but you'll see they're similar on the 11 and 15 pro max. So no matter what you're doing, they do seem to be pretty fast that way. As far as heat, when I first used iOS 17.3 beta three, it was quite warm. I used it a little bit at CES. It took a moment to cool down, but it was processing a lot in the background. So it definitely could be a little bit warmer, but I wouldn't be concerned about it. It's not hot. It's not too hot to actually pick up and hold or anything else, but let's take a quick look at the thermals. It probably will be a little bit warmer as I've been holding on to it, but let's take a look. So on 17.3 beta three, we actually have about 30, three degrees Celsius. And then on 17.2.1 on the same device, we have about 30.5 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit on 17.3 beta three. We have about 92 degrees Fahrenheit compared to about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, I have been holding it a little bit. I just transferred my SIM. So that could make a little bit of a difference. Nothing too concerning. It's not getting to over a hundred degrees like it was earlier on before they'd patched it. So it seems to be doing pretty well that way. As far as benchmarks, let's take a look at that. We'll go ahead and run them right now and see what we get just to refresh it. The benchmarks just finished and iOS 17.3 beta three is on the right with 2,882 compared to 2,943. As far as multi-core, we have 7,103 compared to 7,245. They're pretty close, but it looks like the public version is actually ranking a little bit higher. Again, if I ran this for a few more days, it may actually ramp up a little bit, but right now it may still be processing something, something in the background. We're not really sure at this point as Apple doesn't really show you that.
As far as overall battery life, let me share my battery life with you since I was using this at CES, sometimes with great signals, sometimes without. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the cycle count. And on the natural titanium version, we have 26 cycles. On the other one, the blue one, we have 77 cycles. So both are doing quite well, no issues there. And if we take a look at actual battery health here, at least what it says, if we go to battery, battery, battery health and charging, you'll see we're both at 100% still. So you can see that with coconut battery here on both sides. And in general, as far as battery life, well, battery life here, you'll see it says auto lock will actually save power. And I only turn it off for the video and then turn it back on. But you'll see yesterday I had 10 hours and 52 minutes of screen active time. The thing I don't care for here is that Apple actually includes standby time. So last night I didn't use it. And today I've used, well, about 40% of my battery with only two hours and 47 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 10 minutes of screen idle time. So the days before that they're okay, but they're including standby time. So a regular day, I'm getting about six to eight hours, depending on signal strength. I would expect better. I'm not sure really what's using it. Maybe I'm on social media too much and posting on Twitter X threads, all the other things as well. I'm not sure, but either way, it's not been great yet. Now on the other version, 17.3 beta three, I haven't used it full time while I was on the trip, but you'll see today I've used it for an hour and 48 minutes and barely used any power. So right now it's doing quite well in a few days. It probably will get better. Also, most people are reporting that battery life is quite good on 17.3 beta three. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.3 beta three, if you have the public version, I probably would do that. It seems pretty stable at this point, but just keep in mind, it is a public version or a public beta rather, and it could have some additional issues. It shouldn't have that bricking issue is that's pretty rare. We don't see that very often at all. If ever, as far as 17.2.1, I would definitely update. If you haven't already, it covers security updates, fixes bugs, even though there's still bugs in it, it still fixes some as well. As far as what you had to say, let's take a look at some of your comments. Brian HF eight BC said, I'm using iOS 17.3 beta three on my iPhone 15 pro max with no complaints. EV Lex seven says on 17.3 beta three on my 15 pro max and battery has significantly improved. I can finally go a day without having to recharge in the middle of the day. I still have a little under 40% by 11 PM. Mind you, I also do some medium gaming on the device. Lokman Saeed says iOS 17.3 beta three on my iPhone 15 pro max has been really amazing. This is the first beta where I have not experienced bugs. Battery life has been great and everything has been really smooth. Pro highway says I'm running iOS 17.3 beta three on my iPhone SE second generation battery is average, but I spotted a bug on notification summary. Overall, it's performance is pretty decent. King tech HD said running iOS 17.3 beta three on my 15 pro and 12 pro max, both working great, better battery life and stability over the last few betas. So that's everything with iOS 17.2.1 and iOS 17.3 beta three. Hopefully we see iOS 17.3 RC this week with some new features. Hopefully Apple tells us exactly what's fixed in this update and more. Let me know if you found anything else in either version and what your experience is like in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands in this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.